Hey, so um, it's, it's time to start. We have a pretty small crowd in a big room. Do you guys just want to come forward and maybe we'll make it less of a presentation, more of a discussion? I mean, I'll present my stuff and then we can talk some. Anyone wants to show up, we'll just come here and then um, I'll spend about 15 minutes telling you what I know and then we can maybe open it up and make it a little more of a discussion and find out what you want to know. Does that work for everyone? I just don't like giving a big presentation to a small group. It's not really right energy, you know. Better to make a discussion. I'd rather just talk to you all anyway. Um, so if you want to make your way up, that'd be great. And then we'll get started in a minute. I'm Jacob, by the way. This is uh, Fernando. This is Shang. This is Jakub Suki. Uh, they all come to help me out and give their opinions to different parts of the world and their stories. And so we'll get to that in a second. But um, <clears throat> Instead of a full introduction, I actually want to start with a, a question. This is sort of like a game show. Um, it's like a game show, uh, but there's no prizes. So, but it's, pretend there's a prize. OK. What country has the most visitors to Drupal.org? Really? This is not a trick question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it looks something like this. This is visits to Drupal.org, shaded by the number of visits. You can see the, the, the US sort of washes out everything else on the map. Uh, for the most part. India's there, but the U.S. is pretty dark. Um, the U.S. has, I think, somewhere close to 40% or something of the traffic in the world. Um, okay, we'll start, uh, let me a little harder one. Which country had the largest growth in visitors from 2010 to 2011? No, any other guesses? No, it's a small country. Oops. Oh no, I think my, thing, my think, uh, keynote just um, didn't, uh, wasn't happy for a minute. Let me see if it works now. Sorry, I will have to restart, because I think keynote, it, it said some error, like something has gone wrong, restart keynote, and I was like, I'm not gonna restart keynote right now. And it looked like it went wrong, so images aren't showing up. Give me one second. Yes, North Korea grew by 2,175% last year. Um, of course, you know, it grew from, what, like five users to like 50 users or something like that, so it doesn't really count. Um, let me just pull this back up one second. And I'm sending a very angry letter to, what's his name, Tim Cook? Apple? I don't know. <laughs> About the quality of their presentation software. Um, hold on one second. Pull it back up again. I can do open office, yeah, I've been, I was a Linux user for, for too many years. I've configured my sound card and my graphics driver uh, by hand too many times to count. Okay, let's see if we're better now. Okay, yeah, North Korea. So North Korea grew by about 20x, so that doesn't really count. So I'm gonna talk to you about the differences between numbers and growth. And this presentation is, is mostly data. And I know, like, I'm not gonna bore you for an hour, I know that the average person can listen to someone talk, even someone entertaining, for about 15 minutes. And the average person with an iPhone can listen for about two minutes. Uh, and you all have iPhones, so I'm gonna be quick. Uh, and I don't pretend to know everything about the whole world and why the reasons everything happens in the world. Um, so what I did instead is I crunched a lot of numbers. And I did, I did a lot of analysis, and I'm gonna present the data to you. And hopefully you can make your own conclusions from that. And then I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about a survey I did and what other people in the world say is going on, and then I'm gonna tell you a couple stories around India, which is a country I know pretty well, okay? Then we're gonna open up and these guys are gonna chat and we can all hear from you. Sounds like a deal? Just 20 minutes, not gonna take you an hour, okay. So like I said, this is, this is the, uh, if I map, just the sheer growth. North Korea just takes out everything on the map. That's kind of cheating. Let's look at the top 100 countries. These are the countries which have the most visitors to Drupal.org, the top 100, and they're shaded by, by growth from 2010 2011, the growth in number of visitors. Is that surprising at all to anyone? Africa, all over the place, right? Darkest countries are in Africa, Latin America, Asia, Kazakhstan, Pakistan, right? Uh, it's not the traditional places that you think of where most of the action in Drupal happens, but this is where the growth is happening. It may not be the sheer numbers, but it's where the growth is happening. Missing? It's not very dark. Yeah, it, you know, also there's a, a thing about market saturation. So like China had a lot of growth the year before and 
whatever, but yeah. So, okay, more trivia. Which region had the highest growth in visitors, do you think, from 2010 to 2011? No prizes, just maybe a round of applause if you're right. Middle East, no. Africa, Africa is too big. East Africa, actually. East Africa grew by 69% or whatever, 65% last year in terms of visits to Drupal.org. <laughs> we have Eastern Africa, Western Africa, Central Asia, Southern Asia, Melanesia, it goes down. Notice something? There's no North America, there's no Europe, right? This is where the growth is happening right now in terms of people coming to Drupal.org and visiting. And these aren't small numbers. They're not insignificant like North Korea numbers. They're actually pretty big numbers. But that's just traffic. So that tells us how many people come to this website. What about engagement? How do we measure engagement? How do we know that maybe people are visiting, but they're not really engaged in the community? I think there's a perception, right, that most of the community participation is happening in Europe and North America, even if traffic may be elsewhere. Is that a perception that you hear a lot? I hear that often. Um, I think that if we look at DrupalCon presenters, they're not very representative demographically of where the visitors are coming, yeah? So I got a hold of all the data from groups.drupal.org. Does anyone here visit groups.drupal.org? Some of you? Um, so does everyone know, know what it is? No? Some people know? No? Okay, I'll tell you what it is. So groups.drupal.org is a site where people come in and they discuss whatever. It's a place for people to organize themselves in the community. And a lot of the groups are regional, right? So like there's a Boston group and there's a New York group, there's a Denver group. People come and they meet and they, they talk. And so I got all the data for the last four years. Everyone who's registered become a member of any regional group. And I plotted that on a map. I got the countries it came from. And so of groups, this is the total members of groups per country. So this is a, a sign of engagement. This is people who are not just looking at the website, but are contributing in, as part of a community. You can see the United States is pretty dark, but so is India, so is Brazil, so is Canada. Most of Western Europe is very dark. Australia is very dark. This is where we could say that the most members of groups who are engaged are in these countries. But that's just the sheer numbers. As I said before, we have to look at the growth. Because if we're, if we're looking at numbers, the whole point is to what's going to happen, not what happened. So let's look at the growth a little bit. I think it might surprise you. OK, more trivia. These two countries have more than doubled in groups.drupal.org members every year for the last three years. Any guesses? China and India? Much more humble countries, smaller. What's that, Ivory Coast? No. Ecuador and Costa Rica. Those are the only countries that are doubled in growth every year. Another one. The only country to grow faster, to increase its rate of growth every year from 08 to 11. I wish I had prizes, it'd be more fun. People would try harder. That's actually Spain. Spain is the only country to accelerate growth every year. It's grown incredibly fast. So looking at growth, this is um, in 2008. That was sort of a really big year for Drupal. I think that's when, when we really exploded and a lot of, a lot of big things happened. Um, and this shows, and I'm going to take a minute to describe the, the map so you can get a sense of it, and then we'll, we'll look at the data. The dark, the dark blue, it's almost black on this, is, is 4x growth. That means the number of members of groups in that country grew by four times that year, greater than four times. The sort of normal blue color is uh, two time to four time growth, and the light color means it less than doubled, less than 2x growth. And so you can see on this map, there was massive growth this year. There's a lot of dark spots like Brazil, Mexico, but even the US grew by like 3x that year in terms of members, that's a lot, right? Three times as many people became engaged in the community that were there the year before. Now let's look at that over the next three, four years. This is 2009, 2010, 2011. So last year, these are the countries which experienced the most growth. You know, it's, it's what are the countries you see here? Somalia, Mongolia, Kazakhstan, right, Angola. It's, it's not really what we'd expect at all, right? And so that's where we're seeing the massive growth in engagement. There's this perception that engagement isn't happening in a lot of these other countries, but in, in fact it is, and it's growing faster than anywhere else in the world. Um, in fact, to illustrate it, I'm gonna say, 
can you guess which continent added the most countries to GDO in 2009? So which, which continent had more uh, countries come on board as community members? Africa, by far, 15 of them. 15 of the 30 were from Africa. Five from Latin America, four from Asia, three from Europe. And you could say this is partially about um, market saturation, but this, this map shows you, these are all the countries which had at least one group in 2008, and these are all the countries which have at least one group in 2011. You can see it really filled in all over Africa and Central Asia, and this is where we see a lot of growth. Um, it's not necessarily representative, though, of the people you see in the community, or what you assume is happening. And I'm, I'm curious why that is. I don't have a good answer. As I said, I just have data. You can make your own conclusions about that data. Okay, more trivia. You can guess three countries whose member growth increased by 10x last year, who had 10 times more members. Mongolia, Nigeria, and Liberia. Amazing. Like, I think Nigeria went from, uh, like, what was it, five members to 50, 60 members last year. I don't know how that happens. As I said, all I have is data. Um, here's, a, here's one that is a little bit of a downer, but it's good to know. Of the 20 countries whose growth slowed last year, how many were in North America or Europe? 16. So if we look to the future, we know that eventually everything, every, every market saturates at a certain point. And the growth is still very good in Drupal. It's not like we're declining, but we're not growing as fast year upon year. The growth is slowing year after year uh, in the traditional areas where Drupal's been really strong. And it's really growing in these other countries that we don't know enough about yet. And so I, I started seeing this trend, um, I think about a year ago, and I thought about doing this talk and other things. And I put together a survey uh, this fall, called the Drupal and Emerging Markets Survey, and I sent it out and asked people um, some questions about the Drupal economy in their area, the, the challenges, the opportunities, just what was going on. I didn't get a lot of responses, so you can't consider this very authoritative data. We had 55 respondents from 30 countries, um, non-Europe, non-US. I published the data there. You can find the slides later if you want, DEM-survey, if you want to see the raw data. I'm going to share a couple highlights, though. I think they're interesting. One of the questions I asked was, what are the biggest challenges for you? And the biggest challenges, by far, were ability of skilled employees, lack of training opportunities, and what we call attrition or turnover, people leaving their jobs too soon. And these are pretty much all the same thing, right? <laughs> it's that they have so much growth that they can't hire good people and keep them long enough to deliver on projects. That they're just, they don't, don't have a problem selling it, they don't have a problem charging money, they don't have a problem marketing. Uh, the biggest infrastructure, surprisingly, was not a big problem for most people. Um, but they have a problem retaining talent and growing talent, which is kind of the same problem we have here, I think. On the other side, opportunities. Opportunities people voted on. Mobile was by far the top opportunity. Everyone considered it a big opportunity. There was nobody who said it wasn't an opportunity. Training curriculum was second. That was heavy, which corresponds to the challenges we saw uh, in the slide before. And high performance consulting, that being a major need that's unfilled in those communities. Again, I don't, have, I don't have conclusions for the whole world, but this is the data. Um, another questions I asked were about the Drupal community. So I asked how people agree with this statement. People from my region are adequately represented at global Drupal events. This is the one with the strongest disagreement. It was pretty clear that there is a lack of diversity uh, at DrupalCon in terms of our speakers, our leaders, and this has a negative effect in terms of not providing role models for people uh, to follow, not providing a, um, an opportunity for growth and, and access to that. And I think that's something we should pay attention to and as a community be more aware of and be more proactive about. The other one, the Drupal Association is adequately involved in my region. Very strong disagreement with this. I think there's a lot of desire uh, for our, around the world for the Drupal Association to focus more outside of North America and Western Europe. And I don't think to, to date Drupal Association has done a lot. I know it's on Jacob's agenda and there's probably a DrupalCon happening in Latin America soon, and it, it will happen, but I think that's a need that people are saying, hey, we have this business, we have, we have real money coming in, we have real people working, and we want like, more investment in building this community so that we can hire people and build a community to deliver. So that's the data I have from the survey. And yeah, I don't know, any questions about that? Before I go on, we can talk about it. We're a small enough group. Uh, 
I don't have a graph. So I, I did ask that question on the survey. I said, estimate the size of the Drupal economy and like how much does the average developer make, how much is your project. I have data on that, but I felt like because the numbers were so small, I wouldn't, didn't want to present on that. I think the opportunities and challenges would be the same if you had 1,000 respondents or 60, but that might be a little different. So um, overall, it's very strong. Like I said, there's, there's, uh, I, don't, I haven't looked at anyone who has more supply than demand in terms of Drupal developers. So I think that's not a problem for anyone. Um, so the uh, other thing that was interesting when I did a little research is what's driving a lot of this growth. And one of the, one of the key things um, I think is government is big. Like India has a government mandate for open source. Brazil has a government mandate from open source. Uh, I think something like uh, 39 countries worldwide have a mandate that they have to implement open source solutions wherever possible. And so I think that's also driving a lot of the growth. Um, but I want to talk to you about actually something else. I, I went to India. Um, I actually, I lived, so I, I didn't really introduce myself. Um, I'm Jacob Singh, and I, uh, I work for Acquia. Uh, I, I design a lot of our training programs there now. But I lived in India for about six years uh, in two different stints. I got hired by Acquia when I was living in India. So I spent a lot of time in Delhi, and I'm connected with the community there and what they're doing. And so in, uh, in November, uh, Dries and I and our head of marketing uh, went off to India and went to uh, three cities. So oh, wait, before I go there, actually, the reason we went to India is that India uh, grew by 50% in tra traffic to Drupal.org last year. Uh, massive growth. It's the second largest uh, country in terms of visitors in the world. It surpassed the UK, it surpassed France and Germany, lots of other ones, it surpassed Brazil. And so it obviously seemed like there was a lot of stuff happening. We should find out what it is. So we went to uh, three different cities in a week. It was a week, it was like four days. It was ridiculous. We were in New Delhi, and then we went to Mumbai, and then to Hyderabad. And at each, at each city, there was a Drupal camp that was organized. And we had like, has anyone here ever organized a camp? Yeah? And how, how long, well, I know you did. <laughs> you, you organized this one. Um, how long did it take to set up a, a Drupal camp? Like, how long did it take you to organize it? Yeah. Yeah, you start talking about six months, and the last couple of months are like heavy duty. In the old days, two weeks was easier. Now that there's an expectation of sponsors and food and all these things, it's a little harder. They had like a month's notice, and each place organized a full-on professional Drupal camp with sponsors and food and speakers and the whole nine, um, t-shirts and what have you. And in Delhi, we showed up expecting that it would be like, and this is totally organic. We didn't say do this. People just said, oh, Dries is coming. Let's make it happen. And uh, you know, we showed up, and there was 350 people in Delhi. There was, um, this contrast is awful. There was, uh, you know, I think 250 in Mumbai, 400 in Hyderabad, all people very engaged, very excited. It was kind of weird. People were asking Dries to, like, sign the back of their shirts and stuff like that. <laughs> they were asking me to sign their shirts. I'm like, yeah, I'm not even, I'm, I'm like, not even Dries. Anyway. Um, and uh, they couldn't even understand what Dries was saying, I think, a lot of the time. Like, social publishing. <laughs> Um, but, you know, people loved it, and, it, you know, it, it was inspiring to see. It, it, it felt like the old days of Drupal. It felt like, I've been around for like six years, and it felt like those old days where there was a lot of enthusiasm around open source software. It wasn't just about business and money yet. It was about a lot of other things, too, and a uh, great community and really great feeling. So in every, every city, we had one of these Drupal camps. Um, we had, like, discussions, so we met with people in the community, academic leaders, uh, you know, governmental leaders, open source software advocates, and talked about Drupal's place in that ecosystem. Uh, we also met with the press. So there was an article published, Dr. Dre of the Internet, um, which I, I helped write several of Dries' articles uh, for that thing. So we, we met a lot of, we, we interviewed with a lot of uh, journalists, and we did a whole PR thing, and that was great. Like, it was pretty amazing, actually. We had a lot of journalists show up, a lot of articles published, at least half a dozen, some really good ones. Um, and so we did, we did that to sort of promote things. And then we also met with um, the big uh, system integrators. So that would be like Capgemini and Accenture and Cognizant and people like that. That's his boss on the top. And we collected a lot of business cards. Yeah, <laughs> she's your boss. Well, maybe not, yeah. The CEO of, of, uh, of Capgemini India. And that was kind of shocking because, I don't know, have any of you ever worked in like big IT, like Accenture type companies, IBM? A couple of you. 
And you know, like, what they do, right, they have partnerships with mostly proprietary vendors, many multi-billion dollar deals, or whatever, SAP and, and Oracle and all these people. And they go and sell those to their clients and implement them. And we're, like, so dinky. As much as we think we're huge, to those guys, we're nothing. We're, like, they, they always have this, this slide deck they show you when you come in. Like, all right, this is the, this is the vendors we work with. And there's, like, SAP and Oracle and Microsoft. And at the bottom, it's like, Dribble, you know, <laughs> like, two-point font at the bottom of the thing. Um, and so we kind of expected that treatment, but it was amazing. We showed up to meet Capgemini. We were delayed twice. We were stuck in traffic. We were like half an hour late. And they flew in three vice presidents, and the CEO showed up. And she knew about like, the major Drupal websites. She knew about some of the major firms in Drupal. She'd, she'd actually tried it out. I mean, she manages 35,000 people. And we realized that there's actually something really big going on here. Uh, <laughs> this is not, we didn't, we didn't expect that. And we met with Accenture, we met with Vipro. We, we found a similar story at all these places. They're building huge Drupal teams. And a lot of the biggest sites in the world that we know of are being delivered by these guys in India. We, a lot of the ones we thought were delivered by US firms were actually delivered in India. <laughs> uh, things, and we were so shocked that why didn't we know this? This is like, we're Acquia, this is Dries. Uh, why didn't we know this was happening? They have a 100 person team at Capgemini in India of Drupalists. Um, so, that was pretty eye-opening, uh, and it, it showed me that a lot of big things are happening. It's quite possible that the majority of Drupal developers in a few years will actually be in India and China, and not in the United States at all. Yeah. So, and especially as we grow as a community, as we do bigger and bigger projects, those huge companies, they consult with these folks. They don't, I mean, as cool as Acquia or Phase 2 or whatever Lullabot is, they don't hire those kind of companies. They hire these guys. So it's really important that for us to succeed, we make sure that those companies are capable of delivering quality so that we don't have a, you know, um, we don't have a massive property sort of fail on us. So that was, that was great. And, and you know, it was nice to see that validation that like sort of we made it and get wined and dined by corporate folks and whatever. Um, but the best, the, actually the best experience was meeting all of the people uh, who were involved in the open source community there who are passionate about it. And I want to talk to you for a minute, uh, introduce you to one of them. Uh, her name is Prajula, and uh, she works for a company called Osri Solutions. Mohan is the something of Osri. Are you, the, are you the boss, the big boss? No. He's one of the boss. He's one of the co-founders of, of Osri. A very cool uh, shop in, in Hyderabad and Bangalore. And they do, uh, um, they do open source software delivery. And they primarily do Drupal now. But Prajula started with them um, about six years ago. She's from a pretty small town in the country. Um, you know, and she, she went to an engineering college that had a specific unique program that introduced her to open source. You look at the, in India, 90% of people who graduate with engineering degrees, they study Java and .NET. There is no open source curriculum, really. It's very, 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 very rare. And so that's a big part of the talent problem. It's not that there aren't jobs. It's not that they don't pay well. It's that the, the people aren't willing to go for those jobs. There's an aspirational piece of it which says, if I do Drupal, it's not as good a name as Java. This is to that. But she had a unique experience, and she didn't, um, she decided to go sort of the less traveled path. And as a result of it, she's spoken at international conferences, she's been to two Drupal cons, and she's produced some really amazing code, and she's also contributed back to the community. And so I thought it'd be fun to, to talk to her a bit, and we got a little video. You can maybe meet her yourself, because she'll tell her story better than I will. So, here's Pajula. If my, uh, oh no, keynote, he did it again. All right, I'm gonna show you the video, so just hang on a second. Um, let's see. It's funny, just, there we go, all right. I'll move this guy over here, and oops. What happened there? Okay. Oh, that's not that's not really what I wanted. Thanks, QuickTime. Uh, I'll just do like this. This is good enough, right? Okay. Hi, I'm Prajwala. I'm tech lead at Azri Solutions in Hyderabad. Um, I have been working on uh, Twisted Python framework and uh, Drupal, and uh, I am working on Drupal from past five years. My habits are. Mm, web and uh, Kuchipudi. Uh, Kuchipudi is an Indian classical dance 
and my background is pretty normal. I, I have been supported my parents uh, uh, to join a college. After, jo after my college, I have introduced it to open source uh, through pilot project uh, from Indian government. Then I have got an opportunity uh, to work with Azri. Uh, Azri is the place where I have exposed to more technologies and challenges. I learned more about open source and uh, the community, how to contribute uh, to community. Basically, uh, what is an open source community? I have got understanding at Azri. And uh, um, at Azri, I have uh, got an opportunity to work with the different uh, people from the different countries and different places from India. I am inspired by open source enthusiasts at Azri. And uh, at Azri, uh, there are many people who work on open source and do share their knowledge, contribute back to the community. And uh, I have got a chance to work with uh, a, a developer from Brazil. He told me how to um, use a it's community at all. to learn more. And he told bit, me that yeah, uh, to learn more, you have to contribute. At first, I contributed Bootstrapping. And when I get feedback from the community, some people told me that I'm not going to blog and uh, Forget it. Okay. the work that I have done is the thing that I contributed solved the problems of others. Then I felt great about and uh, really that is a great feeling. And uh, uh, I want to have that the feeling uh, continuously. Then uh, uh, I, it is it is about uh, the self satisfaction. Then I'll I I'll post this for later because I don't think it's very audible. Uh, so sorry about that. that Thought our AV guy did a check, and, but I guess uh, not. So. Yes, I'll give you a good gist. Okay, I won't give it as well as she did. Uh, I think w her her main point was that you know when she when she was involved in her college uh, in India, it's very common. There's a, a thing about net fishing. Anyone heard that expression as related to IT? So like a company like um, Wipro or Infosys or Capgemini, huge companies, they'll come in and they'll hire 10,000 people out of college without even like interviewing them barely. And then they'll like sort of see the 10 or 15 that they like and keep them and everyone else, and like another couple hundred will sit on the bench and do nothing and the rest will get sacked and they'll go on to do it again. Um, this is traditionally how big IT kind of works and it's not a great system in my opinion. But they have it down to a science. And so there's a, there's a lot of, I would say, there's an expression, a lot of, I don't know, I mean, only the Indians in the audience will get it, but there's an expression I've heard called, um, you, we have, have test-driven development in software, and in India you have a lot of shadi-driven development, where you have people who, like, they join because shadi means marriage, so it's about, like, it's a perception that if I join a, a, a prestigious company, like an Accenture, I uh, will have more, re more uh, respect, more recognition. And, um, and so, you know, with Pajula, she was part of that group and she was the one who got away. She was the one who said, I'm gonna do something different. And all of her, her batchmates, all the people she went to school with, are sitting on the bench or they're sacked from those companies or they're going nowhere in their careers. And she's been extremely successful and, and driven and made those decisions to do that and take a less beaten path. And it's made her very happy. And she's sort of wants to encourage that and encourage that it's a new world now and that's not an unsafe thing to do. You can probably become an expert faster in Drupal, a world-recognized expert in Drupal in a couple of years if you really apply yourself. And if you want to become a world-recognized expert in Java, how long would that take you? Like your whole life, right? <laughs> and you won't even be there. You'll have to take training courses and certifications. And so that's been a, a big piece of her success. And the other, the other piece she's mentioning is that she learned and she got good at what she does by interacting with the community. And by giving back, it, it made it a fulfilling career for her, which is far more than the money or the prestige or anything like that that may come with it. And so, uh, hoping that in the next generation, she was saying to me also that you know, in India things are changing. People are embracing more open source. There's more startups happening. And so we hope that that will be a, a trend which will continue. And it really takes projects like Drupal to make that happen. Projects which are financially successful. Right, because when, when Capgemini has to hire 100 Drupal developers, what do they do? They, sorry Capgemini, but they go around and they poach people from the other shops that exist already. They find the best folks they can and they pay them too much money, so they have to leave their other job. And that has a negative effect on the small firms in the short term, but what it does is it raises rates for everybody. And when you raise the rates, 
then you create more desire to have that job, more desire to learn Drupal. And so um, I think that the, it's changing. When, when an open source project becomes commercially viable, it becomes much more of a commercially viable career solution. So I think that's sort of part of what she's saying as well. Anyway, um, let me uh, go back here. And that's it. I think I took too much of your time. This is died again. That was a picture of me, but nice, nice keynote. Thank you. Um, and I, with that, I just want to close, and I want to introduce uh, Sheng and Fernando and Yakub. So uh, starting with uh, Sheng Wang, he's the CEO of insready.com and a Drupal contributor. Um, he's, yeah, go first. He's from uh, Shanghai, and he's going to tell you a little bit about his story and, and some of the people he works with. My name is Jing Shen Wang, and it's Skyride on IRC. Uh, so uh, I run a Drupal and Android shop in Shanghai, China. I'm 100% Chinese, so I'm going to share a little bit of experience of me doing Drupal in Shanghai, China. So my background is um, I have done two startups before uh, my, this current Drupal shop. Um, so my last startup was doing beer websites in New York City. Um, that's the time that I got, in, got into Drupal, and I was really interested in Drupal. So I started going to Drupal meetups uh, in, New, uh, in New York and started presenting in New York. So in 2000, at the end of 2010, I will, the, the startup becomes really successful, and I was started looking for new challenge. So guess where? Uh, Shanghai, China. Uh, there's more money, new opportunities, so I decided it's time to quit the job and go to the Shanghai, China. So I flew to Shanghai in January 2011, just about a year ago, and I got my business license, uh, like small engineering development shop business license, in March 2011, so three months after I landed in Shanghai. Um, then um, in March, then I came back to Drupal Con Chicago for parties, right? That's, that's the most fun thing during, for a year. So I went back to Shanghai, China, and I hired two guys in May 2011. So at that time, I need to make a decision. There were not many Drupal developers in, in China, not many. And most, P, most of Drupal developers uh, had a PHP background or even .NET background or something related. And uh, what they did was a lot, of, a lot of them were like hacking Drupal cores and hacking uh, PHP templates. Uh, so that's the one picture of uh, we were hosting a meetup at our uh, office. Um, so at that time, I need to make a decision. Do I want to hire people who hack a lot of core, uh, hack codes, or do I want to hire someone who has no experience uh, in Drupal and uh, train them? So I, decide, I decided I want to hire people uh, without any Drupal experience. And this is one of my employee. His name is Alex. Is Alex here? Uh, no. So when I hired him, he didn't even know how to program. He had no idea about PHP, HTML. So, but that's OK. I, 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 I recognize his talent, and I thought he's a really smart guy. So I, I trained him. I taught him PHP, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and, and even Android in seven months. Then he started contributing back to your location module, Drupal Commerce module, Flex Service module, barcode module, and at the end of seven months, he received uh, this DrupalCon scholarship. So, 2011, uh, 2012 scholarship. <laughs> Thanks. So, um, um, during the seven months, um, I I didn't I didn't really give him a lot of um, I mean lessons on Drupal itself. I was actually teaching. I was actually teaching him how to learn Drupal um, on his own. So there are two most most important things. I, I think it's um, for a new like uh, outsider to become a Drupaler is uh, first is the the communica uh, community communication. So I brought him to every Drupal Shanghai meetup, um, and I brought him to Drupal Happy Hour in Shanghai. So uh, for those you don't know, have Drupal Happy Hour is a uh, events happening on every last Wednesday worldwide. If you don't have the happy hour events in your city, please organize them. So it's a, it's a, uh, it's a drinking event, and you get to know each other, and you're talking about the codes, talking about anything, and uh, have fun, and uh, you start sharing, sharing experience, sh sharing codes. So I thought that was very useful. And uh, 
I also asked Alex to try to present, make a lightning round presentation at every meetup. So after six, six, uh, seven months, he received this scholarship. Um, so now my sh shop has uh, maybe a five, five uh, full-time engineers, um, and uh, we started receiving a lot of business in Shanghai. We, I, I think at the moment, there are three triple shops in Shanghai, China, and uh, Shanghai has 19 million um, metropolitan population. And uh, I think at each of those three triple shops, there are at least three to five jobs opening. So the economy is booming, and there's so many opportunities, and, and, and it's, it's great opportunity. So I think it's, uh, um, for me, it's a, it's, a, it's a really good chance, a, a good time. So that's my experience with uh, China and Japan. Is it better now? Okay, yeah, yeah, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Hi, is it better? Yeah? Okay. This is Fernando Garcia. He's a technical architect for SGC. Is that the name of the, the firm? I got it right, good. Uh, from Peru, he's a Drupal community leader for Latin America. Organized the, um, the big Drupal camp of Latin America they did there, and has been a long time community member and contributor. So, take it away. Let me, uh, yeah, yeah, please do. I, I, you know, we're having a lot of technical difficulties, obviously, so um, we may have a little bit of a challenge with this, though. Why don't, you, why don't you start talking, and then I'll fix this while you talk. Sound okay. good? Okay. You can talk, too. Okay, real quick. Um, first of all, thanks for the invitation, Jacob. And, well, the Latino community uh, just born, like, you know, from the beginning of Drupal, but people didn't know each other. And when I been my first time in Washington DC in the DrupalCon 2009, I have decided to, to start doing meetings with the people. So uh, yeah, I have many slides to show you here so, so that we, we have some issues with the, with the with software. Okay, but okay, yeah, there is. Okay, so. The, I'm going to present you the state of Drupal Latina real quick. Uh, this is the index. Why, why are we talking in these five minutes? Yeah, you, now you know the size of the population in Latin America, the Caribbean, you know. Uh, this is the open source map in 2009. We had a few activity. Perhaps Brazil was a big one, you know. And if you, you want to find information about uh, Latin, the Drupal Latino communities, it's a bit hard outside because, you know, only 90 people participated in the, in the survey made by, by Dries, the state of Drupal. So it's not, you know, a good source to, to, to know what's happening there. So, uh, so what I did is to ask the Drupal Association to give me some, some data. And this is what I got. Uh, it's the map that you have seen before, you know. Um, and this is the activity according to Google Analytics in Drupal.org. Brazil is a big one, you know. But we still see, you know, a big, uh, big country, and we don't know what's happening with the others. Uh, this is more more clear. From starting three years ago, uh, you see the growth of Latin American uh, people uh, in the Drupal.org site. Uh, but if you if you look at the Caribbean, you know, uh, the small portion of our American continent, there is a huge growth, and they have a really active community there. And this, uh, this is reflected in the statistics presented before by, by Jacob. Um, so what are all communication channels? If you want to join the Latin America, are here some Latinos present? Hey, there, there are many Latinos. So let's let's join there in drupal.org in, in groups drupal.org and drupalatino.org um, also what are the challenges Th those are similar but th these are specific to our community uh, and if you want to know how is our community you know what we do there how are our events we are, I have some pictures for you uh, we we are together we enjoy to to have you know, some events. This was the, the past year in Foz de Iguazu. It's a really amazing place in Brazil. 
and we have many, many people from Latin America there. And we love to share time, breaking barriers. These are many events, you know, some meetups and in Brazil, in Mexico, in Peru happening. And we also teach people, we coach each other. We, we, we have uh, a, an event that is called Drupal Summit Latino. We had 200 people in Peru and uh, this year in January we had 200 people again in Guadalajara, Mexico. So uh, it's not as huge as, as a DrupalCon, but we leave the open source uh, principles and, and we love Drupal. And so we enjoy to celebrate together, to, to drink, you know. Th there are, they seem like coffee, coffee cups, but they, can, they don't have permission to sell beer. So you see beer in those coffee cups, you know. <laughs> so they, that's why they're excited about, about coffee. And so we also contribute, you know, with some Drupal, Drupal contribute uh, meet, meetings. And, and finally, the conclusion is that you, we are joined by two languages. I think that this is our, our biggest, you know, opportunity and being touched that we have Spanish and Portuguese and they are 90% similar. And uh, I, I, I speak Portuguese and Spanish because it's so easy. And what, what we need to do uh, is apart from coaching people and, and uh, taking advantage of our opportunities for networking and doing translation, we need to do uh, more modules because we have few modules, we need to do more core patches and more themes, you know. Uh, I, I, that's that's per my, my, my main, you know, uh, uh, preoccupation here and I, wor I am really working really hard to, to make that happen, m to have all that move happening. And the last thing is that I am working in this project, it's drupalatino.org, uh, as a hub. This is the purpose of the project, if you Latinos want to help and perhaps people in other regions, you know, Asia perhaps want to do something similar, you know. Um, that's it. Thanks for listening. And then finally, before we open up for questions, Jakob Suki is a director of personal services Europe for Acquia uh, and a longtime Drupal contributor, member of the security team. And uh, he's from the Czech Republic. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about maybe what's happened in Eastern Europe over the past four years. Great. Thanks. Uh, so I was born and raised in Czech Republic, and then I decided to move to London and I joined Acquia. Uh, but I still have a lot of perception of what's happening in Czech Republic and in Eastern Europe, although we don't like to say it's Eastern Europe. Um, uh, we like to say it's Central Europe. The community, um, I actually started, just as an introduction, I started the Drupal Czech community back um, five years ago on Drupal.cz. And um, that's actually one of the challenges uh, that I see uh, that you saw, uh, you had in your stats that some of the countries are not grow, growing that much on drupal.org. And I think that that's because some of the uh, communities in these countries have local communities on Drupal CZ or their own, and the challenge is always the language. Um, so that's why some of the countries, I think you would find out that they are, they are actually drawing, growing more, but not, not on drupal.org. Drupal um, and the communities and uh, Drupal in these countries um, are growing a lot. Um, but I think the main challenge is, uh, for example, in Czech Republic, Czech Republic is right now a very standard European country. Uh, so it comes with all the challenges that European countries have with expensiveness of people. Uh, but at the same time, it didn't have a lot of time to grow in terms of Drupal. So I think that the main countries that I see growing right now are countries like Bulgaria, Ukraine, Moldova where there are large Drupal companies that, you f that are actually on, on Drupal cons, like pro people that have a lot of people in Bulgaria and Moldova, or other Drupal companies that are building teams in these countries. And that's where I see the growth. And I think that if you have a Drupal company, uh, the way to help us grow communities in these countries is to come to these countries. Um, and I'm not necessarily a fan of offshoring work but at the same time, if you come to our countries and give the people work, you'll help grow the community. I'm not gonna show you the slides, you know where it is. It's evaluations, it's probably broken anyway. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna open up, let's, let's have a discussion if you wanna hang out in our discussion, so. Is there any, any questions, anything people wanna talk about? Anything else anyone wants to share from where they're from? 
there, there's a mic in the, in the middle, and uh, that mic can be recorded. Hello. Um, I'm Tony Val with Prometheus Consulting from Indianapolis. Um, I wanted to hear a little bit more about um, the history of trying to get a DrupalCon South America going. And uh, I'm, I'm very interested in possibly attending that and uh, wanted to hear how it's coming. Okay, th there is a work that started four years ago to make a DrupalCon Latino happen. So it might be, we don't know, we, it's not yet official, but you have to be in the closing session, perhaps it's going to be some surprise. I cannot say more. <laughs> and you are invited to, to attend, of course. Just a quick uh, process question for um, for you. When later on, can you update the session listing to include everybody's contact info? You're the only one up there right now. Oh yeah. Yeah, just you know, for posterity, yep. make it happy easier for people to, to find also, each other. I don't know if you guys have cards. You can. My cards are here if you want to take them, but they're not. But I'll put it up. Yeah. <laughs> if I don't, come hassle me because I just forgot. Yeah. Is there interest in? Uh, in partnering with U.S. companies in your respective markets? I would say absolutely. Um, some of the companies don't understand that right now, that their market might be limited, but there's a lot of companies that want to grow out of their countries because they see it as a, as a way to grow in not only their business, but skills. And absolutely, there's a lot of companies interested in that. Yeah, I want to add, uh, I have not mentioned that, that there is a, a big, big business outside Europe and you know, North America. And the big companies should, should really care that there is, there is a lot of money, but the, the government in those countries and the big companies that need big projects don't think, you know, the, the first quality, you know, uh, products that big companies can provide. And the local, the, the local businesses also have to care that uh, the big ones are coming and they have to level up their quality and their um, mature their processes and, uh, and things like that. So it's part of the growing, you know, and, th and that's happening right now, actually in Latin America. Uh, for the market in China, well, first of all, there, there's a background information. China, Chinese government are flying a huge amount of uh, funding for Chinese technology companies. So when I'm in China, I'm trying to work with local Chinese uh, like companies because they have so much more money than I do. Uh, and uh, when I was about to go to China, and I, there were a few uh, Drupal shops, in, maybe one or two Drupal shops in the uh, United States, they contacted me, they said they are interested in give me funding or like become a partner of this program. Um, also, right now, uh, the, um, for my company, uh, the, uh, the demand is huge, so I have to fly U.S. Drupalers to China to do the work there, and uh, we're paying their like, U.S. equivalent salary. So that's, that's the market for, for me. Another thing I want to mention, just in my experience being in India, is that pretty much every small shop is working uh, for other shops in the U.S. at some level. They're not, they do some direct clients, and they do also pretty much are subcontracting frequently. That's very common. Uh, and then the big Accentures and Capgeminis and all that, uh, one thing that is surprising about them, we found, is how much uh, strategic consulting they do. So they'll actually, their, their India teams are flying to the U.S. and suggesting solutions and, and working and, and sort of selling directly, which we didn't, we didn't realize. So, yeah. Uh, Jacob, you've seen so many markets. Do you see a training infrastructure difference between the companies like, let's say, in India, China, and in the U.S.? Because in the past few days, you know, the more interaction I've had, there's been a lot of talk about lack of talent. But like, you know, the gentleman here said, uh, Indian and Chinese companies find it very comfortable to get a non-Drupal guy, spend six months, seven months, train him, and then you know make him efficient. Uh, is, there a, is there a basic difference between the way these companies operate back home uh, in is India and China versus in the US? I mean, I, I, I don't know at Takriti how that works, but I've, 
I tend to contradict that. I mean, my, my experience in India is that while there is the ability to pick someone up and train them, and oftentimes I think the, the margins there are, are, are good between what you can charge your clients and what you pay your developers, so it allows you to do that safely for more time, whereas a US company can't do that. Um, there's a huge fear of getting training someone and having them getting taken by one of the big companies, isn't it? So and I mean, right now there isn't, but with all of these big companies coming in, I think there yeah. would be. But yeah. yeah, as of now, yeah. I mean, I think that's, that, that is a piece. I think it's easier to invest in people for a longer time because the financials make sense in India and China right now. But will that continue to be the case as the rates go up and as the, you know, the salaries go up? I'm not sure. Um, sure. I, I'm, I'm curious to see, there's a lot of, when I was in India, because training is what I primarily do. Like I'm an engineer by, by, by training, but, but now I'm a teacher primarily. And so asking a lot about that, there's a lot of demand in India for certification. Um, there's a lot of demand for sort of formal education and, and a piece of paper at the end of it that says you've, you're now a Drupal expert, which is something that's very um, contentious in the US, that no one wants to sort of do that. So I don't know if that would help grow the number of experts by providing a financial incentive and accreditation. Maybe. It helps with the shadi concept you mentioned. Yeah, it helps with the shadi concept. It helps with the reputation, the aspirational economy side of it. Um, just personally, a little bit worried about the certification, whatever that means, because I don't, know, I don't know how it works there, but I see it as a way for the companies to say, we have Drupal certified people, so we can sell you services. But that doesn't necessarily reflect the quality. And um, it's very hard to create a certification program that reflects quality, right? We know that. And I just wanted to quickly say about the last, the previous question, that I believe that in the future the work will flow both ways, and we can already see that. Um, and just it's not in emerging markets, but for example, I know uh, one of the big companies in Europe is desperately looking for a lead developer and looking to hire him in or her in in America and fly him to Europe. So uh, the, the work will fly both ways very soon. So by the way, if you're interested, talk to me. <laughs> okay, about certification, I, I, I think that this, the, it, this will born naturally, you know. Uh, Drupal is coming to the universities. Uh, they are starting to give some trainings, uh, at least that happens in Latin America. Uh, so. Uh, we, if we want to say I am a company that provides quality and I have people that has skills and that had a, a good profile, uh, perhaps we, we also need, need to care they are about the early curriculum. The, the curriculum that we have right now is Drupal.org profiles. You know, how do you contribute? How much you contribute? How good is your, your code? How awesome are your modules? Uh, this is a great way to make, you know, uh, a good a good profit for it for every developer and companies should support that you know that that happened in US Europe and that should happen also I, I hope in the other regions that are emerging and growing they should learn that uh, they should not forget that we are open source you know I leave those principles I think um, with that we probably have to close I think we're running out of time but um, thank you all for coming and, and being involved so take care